Okay, this video we will be covering problems 7 and 8. So it says, for problem 7 and 8, use the graph to find the intervals on which the function is increasing, decreasing, constant. Then state the domain and range in interval notation and find the x-intercepts and y-intercepts and then find f of 2. So for part A, we're going to describe where this function is increasing. And what you're going to do is trace your graph from left to right to figure that out. So if I start here, and it does have a solid dot, so I'm going to put a bracket there. If I trace it, I'm going up, 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 up. That means I'm increasing until I get to this value. Or not even a bracket, I'm sorry. I don't need to put anything there. So it's going to be from this number all the way to here. So in this region here that I'm outlining, the graph is increasing, okay? As I keep going toward the right, from here to here, it's a flat line. So in this region, it's constant. Then if I keep tracing, it's going down, down, down until it gets to here. So that means that in this region, it is decreasing then from here to here it's flatlined again so that means in here it's constant then from here to here it's decreasing again because it's going downward and then from here to here to here this whole region it's actually increasing so which are the intervals for which it is increasing? Increasing would be in this region here and in this region here. And so what are the x values for which that region starts and stops? So the region starts here, that x value is actually a negative six. And it continues up until it gets to this x value, which is a negative three. Then there's a giant gap in between this region and that region. Okay. And so we need to have a union symbol to tie our intervals together. Now this region begins down here at the x value of three, positive three, and stops here at the x value of five. And so those are the for which the function is increasing. Now we're going to do the same thing, but for intervals of decreasing. And since we already mapped everything out, we're just going to pay attention to those special regions. So we notice that in this region, it was decreasing, and in this region, it was decreasing. So again, all we need is the x values from left to right of each of those sections. So in here, I'm going to start off with the leftmost point, which is at negative 2, all the way until I get to the rightmost point, which is at positive 1. Now there is a gap in between this region and this region, so I'm going to put a union symbol. And then this short region it starts from here, which the x value is 2, and continues until this point, and that x value is 3. And so those are the intervals for decreasing. Now for the intervals of where the function is constant. That happens in this tiny little interval here and in this tiny little interval there. So again, x values only. So the leftmost point is here. That x value is negative 3. To the rightmost point in this region, which is a negative 2. Union. Over here, the leftmost point is here, that x value is 1, and the rightmost point is here, and that x value is 2. And so there are my regions for being a constant function. Now for part B, this one says um, state the domain and the range. Well, the domain is the furthest left point to the furthest right point but if you have any gaps, you have to kind of pause, right? But I can trace this graph all the 
way to the end without ever picking up my pencil. There is no gap in the domain or the range. So the domain is going to be the furthest left value in the entire graph. The furthest left point is this. That x value is negative 6. And because it's a solid dot, I'm going to have a bracket for my domain on negative 6. Then I've got to go all the way with the rightmost point, which is here. And that's at the x value of 5. Again, a solid dot means I need to use a bracket. Just FYI, although there were solid dots when I was doing these intervals, when you do intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant, you should never have a bracket. And the theory behind that is, is you can never increase, decrease, or just be constant at a specific point because you don't have another um, point of reference, okay? So you have to have two points in order to tell me whether it's increasing or decreasing or constant, okay? If it's just one point, you can't have enough information to determine whether it's increasing, decreasing, or constant, which is why it can never increase, decrease, or const be constant at one x value. It has to be between two x values that it increases, decreases, and, const and is constant. So make sure you never put a bracket on these three kinds of intervals. However, when it comes to domain and range, those intervals should have brackets where necessary. Now, the range here is going to be from the lowest y value to the highest y value. So which is the lowest dot? I actually have two that are on the same y value, and that y value is negative 4. And it only takes one of these dots to be solid for me to put a bracket. But both of them happen to be solid, so I'm going to put the bracket. Then go to the highest y value, and you actually have three points that have the highest y value, and that y value is a positive 2. And again, all three of those points are solid, so it should have a bracket. Although it only takes one of them to have a solid in order for me to put a bracket. Now, Let's see part C. It says find the x-intercepts. So the x-intercepts are, we have one, two, and three x-intercepts. So we have negative four comma zero, the coordinates of the point. We have zero, zero, the coordinates of this point. And then we have one, two, three, four, positive four comma zero as the coordinates of this point. For the y-intercept, there should always only be one y-intercept. That's where it crosses the y-axis, which is there at the point 0, 0. And then finally, part D tells us to find f of 2. Remember what this means. Normally, there's an x value in there, and this is just fancy notation for y. So what are they asking you for then? They're telling you that the x value is 2 and they want to know what is the y value. So if I go where x is equal to 2, the graph is here. And what is this y value? It is negative 1. So the answer to f of 2 is negative 1. Now let's go over to the graph of problem 8. We still have to find the same bits of information. It's just a totally different looking graph. So I'm going to start off with trying to find A. We're going to work with increasing. Then we're going to do decreasing. And then we'll do constant. And so then for this particular problem, um, we're going to um, do what we did before. So start with the very left. And it's going down, 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 down until it gets to here. So in this region here, it is um, actually going down, so it's decreasing. Then from there, it goes up, 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 up until it gets to here. So in this region, it's actually increasing. Then from there, it starts to go down, 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 down until it gets to here. So in this region, 
it's decreasing again. Then it goes up, 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 up until it gets to there. So in this region, it's increasing again. And then from here, it goes down, down, down until it gets to this spot, which means that in this re region, it's decreasing again. So what are the intervals where it's increasing? That would be in this region here and in this region here. And when we talk about intervals of increasing and decreasing, we only want the x values and never any brackets, right? So this, it's, this region starts right here on the graph. And that x value is 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And this region stops increasing until it gets to here, which that x value is negative 1. There is a gap in between the two increasing regions, so we're going to tie them together with the union. And then this region starts here, where the x value is 1, and stops up here, but the x value is actually positive 3. Now for the regions of decreasing. That is going to be this region here, this region here in the middle, and this region here on the right. So where does it start? This actually has an arrow, not a dot, which means it doesn't actually stop here. It keeps going and going and going forever. Now although it's going up forever, it's also going to the left forever. So if it's going to the left forever, what x value does it eventually go to? It eventually is going toward negative infinity. But where does the region stop on the right? It stops here, which is at negative 3. Then there's a gap, so I put the union, and it starts here, which is negative 1, to here, which the x value is 1. Then it's up here again, that x value is 3, all the way to this x value, and that x value is 4. And so that's the intervals for increasing or decreasing. For constant, it's never flatlined ever throughout this entire graph. So for this one, you say um, no solution or empty set is what that is. Um, there's no interval that you can provide where the graph is constant because the graph is never constant. Okay. Then for part B, it's tell me the domain and the range. Well, how far left does it go for the domain? It goes forever to the left, which means eventually it goes towards negative infinity. How far right does it go? It goes up to this x value, which is 4. But notice that it's an open dot, which means you cannot put a bracket. You have to put a parenthesis. Now, the range is from the bottom to the top. So the bottom here, which is 0, and there are solid dots on both of those graphs, and it goes up all the way to this y value, but notice this has an arrow. So this actually keeps going up and up and up. It doesn't stop at that y value. It forever goes up. And if it's forever going up, what y value is it eventually going to? It's eventually going toward positive infinity. Okay. Now even though this circle is open, it would make you think, oh, well, I have a break in my y values. No, because you have a solid dot here, solid dot there, and a solid dot here and here. And it only takes one solid dot to fill in that gap so that there's no break in the range. Now for my intercepts. My x-intercepts, I have two of them. I have this point here, which is the coordinates are negative 3, 0, and this point here, which is 1 and 0. Your y-intercept, you have 1, and the y-axis is here, so this is my y-intercept, which is 0 and 3. And then the last step is to find f of 2. So same thing again, normally it's f of x is fancy notation for y. They've given you the x value, 1, 2. You go to the graph, and then you figure out what that y value is. And that y value happens to be a positive 3. So f of 2 equals positive 3.